Time now for another eight sports extra. Thad Braun along with Carl Jones talking about the Bills and the NFL draft and who better to bring in for that than Chris Trapasso from CBS Sports, one of the draft experts there. And Chris, you know, before we get into talking about where the Bills should go, namely how many receivers they should take, what is your life like this time of year? I know the draft is is more or less a 12-month-a-year thing for you, but now that we're into April, and other than talking to dopes like us every other day, what, what kind of are you doing to get ready for the last three weeks of this draft prep season? I'm just trying to find any prospects that might be draftable that I can watch. I'm I'm up around 250 prospects that I've evaluated. I like to get more prospects evaluated than draft picks. That's kind of the goal. I certainly miss out on a few. There's guys that get picked in the seventh round that I, I haven't watched a ton of film on. But this time of the year, that's what I'm trying to do is kind of shore up any any guy with a 40 inch vertical or who ran sub four or five at any position that try to get some film on him and get an evaluation down. And it's, it's so much fun doing these type of podcasts to kind of be able to empty all of this kind of useless information I have until draft weekend, but to be able to get it out pre-draft is always a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't think the information is useless at all. In fact, I can't wait to hear from you. L- listen, Bill's mafia wants to know about receivers and quite frankly, I do too. Oh, yeah. And Anyone who's watched it, listened to this draft process knows that this is a really darn good receivers class. From your perspective, where does it rank in terms of recent memory and just how, how good this class is? Yeah, it's really good. It's up there. I would say, uh, so my first year fully evaluating drafts was 2014. That class was really, really good. There's probably you no know, two future Hall of Famers with Mike Evans and Devonta Adams in that draft class. Obviously, OBJ, Brandon Cooks. Um, Jarvis Landry, Allen Robinson, a really good class. I don't think it's quite that good. And I think recently, um, 2020, that had Brandon Ayuk and Justin Jefferson and T. Higgins and Michael Pittman. It it's, doesn't have, to me, the depth that those two classes have in terms of well-rounded, later-round wide receivers. Now, I think at the top, it stacks up there with 2014 and with 2020, even 2021, that is turning out to be a really good draft class with those big three at the top. I think Brian Thomas should be really included as a big four at the top, the other receiver from LSU. Um, and, and there is good depth, but I think it's more of niche depth. Like like there's good burners. There's good, uh, very uh, reliable chain movers underneath in the slot in terms of guys that, might be picked in the fourth or fifth round who eventually are going to be 150 target guys. I don't know if there's a ton of those, but if you want a specific flavor later in the draft, this is definitely the draft to pick one of those wide receivers. Yeah. I saw you going through, uh, you know, you did a Q and a on, on X slash Twitter um, last mm-hmm. night and you were answering some questions and I don't want to say it was surprised, but you know, I think the general opinion out there with this draft has been receivers ridiculously deep and you can get great players, you know, first, second, third round, no problem. But from what you just said and what you're talking about social media recently, it does seem like your feeling is that, yes, there are good players beyond that top four, but counting on these guys to be an eventual wide receiver one top elite guy might be a little bit of a stretch. Obviously, guys are going to pop. But to that point, do you think from the Bills point of view, they absolutely have to make sure they grab one of those top four, even if it requires a sizable trade up? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm not a big advocate of trading up for something that's not a quarterback or, but I, I think, you know, there's certain exceptions to every rule and teams are in different scenarios. Um, but this is kind of a nuanced answer that I think the bills, and we can get into this just in terms of what I think and what you guys think they're going to look like scheme wise under Joe Brady with this being like Joe Brady's real offense this season that we're going to see not a truncated version of, you know, the Brian Dable, Ken Dorsey offense. I think the Bills want to spread it around a lot. We saw that down the stretch when they went 6-0 and and even into the playoffs. So I don't think there is as big of a need to have this Stephon Diggs, like elite receiver, wide receiver one, 12 targets a game type. But if that's what the Bills do want, I agree with you, Thad, that I don't think this is a class where you can wait until the fourth round and get an Amon Ross St. Brown or something like that. I, I think if the Bills want to say, look, uh, we're going to wait on receiver, which I do think is pretty unlikely. Then they're kind of running the risk of this guy's only a downfield guy, doesn't run great routes, or a Malik Washington or an Anaya Smith from Texas A&M. They're really slot guys, yak guys that can't play on the perimeter. So I, I think, yes, I would lean toward 
they should just pick a receiver in the first round. They don't have to go galaxy brain like I just did there. Just pick a receiver, one of the best ones in this class. I think even at 28 or the slight move up, and we know Brandon Bean loves to do that, they can get someone that can be an instant impact guy and then eventually kind of become that quasi wide receiver one if they want that in 2025 and beyond. Now, say the top four for whatever reason. Obviously, I think the top three are out of the question without some Julio Jones trade up. And then Brian mm-hmm. Thomas, yep. um, I think I saw his his over under dra- on DraftKings the other day. I think it's like 16 and a half. So I mean, you're going to have to trade it to get him as well if you want him. So say those four are off the board. With the offense that you presume Joe Brady's going to run this upcoming year, what kind of receiver or who should they target if they were to stay put around 28? Lad McConkey just keeps popping into my head. I mean, he, he doesn't have the measurables of the big four. And I think if he was a little bigger, we'd be talking about him somewhere in that 10 to 15 to pick 17 range. Um, but he kind of fits the mold of what I think is becoming kind of the modern day wide receiver, the guy that can be that wide receiver one. Six foot, under 190 pounds. That's not too light. I think five to 10 years ago, he would be a, a third or a fourth round pick just based on his size alone. He has short arms, not big hands, but as we all watched at Georgia against, you know, future NFL caliber talent got open all the time, could get down the field. I think he's sneaky good after the catch. He kind of feels like to me, one of the more well-rounded wide receivers in what I've been saying. I I don't think there's a ton of depth there, but after you get past the Roman Dunes, days and the Malik neighbors and the Brian Thomas McConkie to me just seems like someone that is high floor. And because of the athleticism running four, three, nine, having close to a 40 inch vertical. And we just didn't see him get thrown the football very often at Georgia. And he was hurt last year. I think he represents a lot of upside too. I think the concern for me with McConkey has been, and this was maybe more so when Stefan Diggs was part of the equation that he feels like a, uh, an intermediate guy, a short to, to a separator, a route runner, you know, not a guy who's going to take the top off and the bills have, you know, Khalil Shakir theoretically to do that. Curtis Samuel, that's his game. Dalton Kincaid, that's supposed to be his game as well. Mm-hmm. Now, with Diggs out of the picture, you know, I, I think there's a whole lot more room for McConkey to, to operate there. But again, you know, the Bills are still left without a, you know, real, legit, bona fide, deep threat. And again, McConkey, I think, would be a great pick. But to me, I, I'd almost lean away from him to try and find that physically dominating guy. How much sense do you think that makes? Yeah, I mean, it's just we don't know what the Bills ultimately want to do. Do they want to just replicate the same style as they had with Stephon Diggs? Or like we saw once Joe Brady took over, they kind of, I don't want to say phased a really good receiver out of the offense on purpose, but they didn't necessarily need that intermediate separator. They got things done creatively. They used James Cook down the seam uh, as a receiver. There was a Dalton Kincaid game. There was a Khalil Shakir game, and he obviously really crescendoed into the playoffs. So if they want to go more LSU style where where uh, Joe Brady had Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and they were amazing after the catch, maybe to your point, Thad, that they would lean more toward an A.D. Mitchell who's 6'2", over 210 pounds. Wasn't great after the catch in college, but wasn't really put in those situations, really won down the football field um, and was really only asked to stay on the vertical route tree. So it just really depends on what the Bills – want to do philosophically if they will change because of the new offensive coordinator or they want to keep things the same and and which was obviously very successful as we saw Josh Allen break out into a franchise quarterback all right so I'm gonna give you a job here right the Bills have just hired you as a scout you're in the war room draft weekend day one has gone by and let's say McConkey, Eddie Mitchell in the top four out of the picture okay who is your receiver you get to trade up all the way up to 33 if you want to you're standing on the table and you're telling Brandon Bean, I need you to take this guy. Trust me, I promise you he's going to work out. In your eyes, Jav- who is that? Javon Baker from UCF. He is someone that I watched him really early in the process. I try to watch quarterbacks first, so I don't, just don't have any change of opinion during pro days. And I know I'm going to talk about receivers, especially this year with the Bills obviously needing to prioritize that position. And I watched him in early January. And I remember thinking to myself, like, he's the one, like he's the player that, and at the time I I figured with Stefan Diggs, the bills could maybe wait until the second round and pick him at 60. But if you're telling me I could trade up into the forties, all the way up to 33, Javon Baker started at L- or at Alabama. Uh, the, the full route tree is there. He beats press very well, leaping ability. He was fourth in this draft class in contested catch win rate. Um, and that's, for a six foot one, 200 pound wide receiver, he's not this colossal guy. Very good down the field. Now he ran a little bit slower. He ran in the four five, so maybe that 
could lead to him falling to pick 60, but he kind of felt like Stefan Diggs to me on film. A little bit bigger, not quite as explosive, but just the physicality, the tenacity, running routes, he can deal with the physicality. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Javon Baker. And I think even early on, I like mocked him to the Bills at 28. That was pre-combine, and he doesn't really have a first-round profile athletically. But on the field, Javon Baker from UCF, who was so good after transferring from Alabama, he would be the guy for me. I'm totally with you. If you need someone to stand next to you and pound the table as you pound okay. the table, I'm, I'm right there. I think he's fantastic and does everything you'd want a, a bona fide number one to be able to do. Now, we've kind of thrown out, you know, uh, trade ideas, you know, theories. How about the other end? Takes two to tango with a trade. From you looking at the draft and team needs, is there a team, whether it be top 10, you know, early teens, early 20s, is there a team that you think makes sense to be on the other end of a trade because they would be okay moving down, whether it be first or second round, and acquiring picks as opposed to sitting where they are right now? Yeah, there's two teams that, that kind of stand out to me, one in each conference. I could see the Jacksonville Jaguars, who the Bills traded with last year, trading back. It's just where they're picking at 17, There's it's kind of hard to peg what position they will prioritize, but that they would be fine moving back into the late 20s, get some more extra picks. And their GM, Trent Balky, when he was in San Francisco, was like notorious, was always trading down. That was like really his MO there with uh, the 49ers. And then I think the Rams, that they're a team, I don't want to say they're in transition with Matthew Stafford, but after Aaron Donald's retirement, they have Cooper Cup, they, they hit on Puka Nakua. I think they feel very good and confident about their ability to find those fifth rounders like a Puka Nakua. Was it? I'm, I think the Bills kind of feel the same as well but that would be a team where I think they would be okay going from 19 to 28 picking up a third rounder or a fourth rounder from the bills um and and yeah it it is hard to tell but those two teams kind of stand out and that range like Carl was saying earlier would probably be for that Brian Thomas selection now transitioning a little bit from receiver now even though I could talk about them all day so could you and I know that and I have just love this class and I hope that 50 of them get drafted and we get to talk about them but there are other needs on this Bills roster, and yep. they could possibly attack somewhere else in that first round. I want to start with defensive end. There's like a top four, I say, that have been have yes. gotten the most publicity. Jared Verse, um, Latu from UCLA, Chop Robinson, and then um, Dallas Turner from Alabama. Who's your who's your favorite and who you believe could be around in that late 20 range of the, when the Bills select? So this is, I, I'm kind of out there on this one. Chop Robinson is my edge number one. He, he to me, it, did not have a huge arsenal of pass rush moves, and that's usually kind of a disqualifier for me, but I don't think he's totally, like, unknowing what to do with his hands, and I just love his burst and bend and dip around the corner. And if you're looking at it from a Bills angle, I think this is what's been missing on this defensive line. They've prioritized size and length and power, and Greg Rousseau has turned out to be a pretty good player. Epinesa resigns. He's a solid rotational piece. But that Von Miller type to be able to win in under two seconds around the corner with just sheer athleticism, that's what I think they need. And I think a lot of teams need that, honestly. And Chop Robinson, to me, is better than anyone at doing that, just winning with sheer athleticism. He's very young. I like that there was two back-to-back -back years with borderline elite-level production in terms of just how frequently he generated a pressure. Give him a few pass rush moves. Let him build some strength to add a bull rush to his arsenal. I, I don't want to say he's Von Miller 2.0, but he's one of the closest I've seen athletically in terms of get off, bend, and the flattening ability to the quarterback. I don't think you're crazy at all. In fact, I'm going to get something off my chest right now, and this has nothing to do with the Bills. Can you explain to me why Dallas Turner is the number one uh, edge in this, in this draft? To me, Latu and Verse and Robinson are all guys that I could plug in tomorrow and are going to threaten the quarterback more. Now, look, I get that Turner's, you know, he's kind of like the, the, um, the, the, who was the guy? Trevon Walker at the Jacks a couple mm -hmm. years ago. That was a yep. great athlete, even though he didn't look like a, a player. Dallas Turner to me looks like that. But regardless, I, I get lots who's got the neck injury. But, you, you know, as someone who's plugged into this draft, why is everybody just putting Dallas Turner at number one? And obviously you're not, but, and, and generally not questioning it because he does not look like that guy to me. Yeah, that's a good question. I think because he was a big recruit, he was like the number one recruit in the nation following Will Anderson there to Alabama. So the hype has been there. And he, of course, has freakish athleticism. We saw that at the combine. He was really the only edge rusher in this class that had a, a better workout in terms of 40 and explosion than Chop Robinson. And what's interesting about Dallas Turner, and I think this might be the icing on the cake, 
he's like just under 6'3", 245 pounds. So he's like on the smaller side, that stand-up kind of rush linebacker. He has an 83-inch wingspan. He is one of the like the longest edge rushers in this class, a lot longer than Chop Robinson. So I think, like you just said, Trevon Walker goes ahead of Aiden Hutchinson two years ago, and everyone's like, what the heck? Like, this is this doesn't make any sense. That's what happens in the first round, that traits sometimes trump just how good of football players they are. Now, we would think, you know, just given how the trajectory for Trevon Walker and Aiden Hutchinson's career have gone, that teams would maybe smarten up. But I think it's very hard for clubs to just move away from that tantalizing skill set and the upside with Dallas Turner. Let me follow up with you quick on that, too. So, you know, considering the the Bills path we kind of laid out here where the thought is wide receiver round one, but because the, the drop off from the top four edges to after that seems to be more precipitous than at receiver, would it make more sense for the Bills to sit at 28 in round one? Not necessarily because that's the best receiver, but to kind of keep the powder dry in a trade up and then burn it in round two if a chop or a lot to falls into the mid to low high 30s to where, you know, if you come out of this draft with, let's say, Xavier Leggett and, and Chop Robinson, do I feel better about Buffalo than if I trade up for Brian Thomas and my second round pick is, you know, edge number seven or a center or a safety, which, you know, to me probably isn't as impacted position as you could get in an edge. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there is a big drop off. There's not really that second or early third round edge like that would be like the Javon Baker for me where I'd be pounding the table for him. Chris Braswell from Alabama, Dallas Turner's teammate, is maybe the only one. Uh, but yes, I think doing it that way and, and and maybe thinking like don't totally take edge rusher off the board for the Bills or in that scenario, maybe it's not in round one. It's in round two where Brandon Bean is more aggressive if one of those big four fall or again, Chris Braswell, who I think is very good, has that instant starter ability because he's a little bit bigger and stronger than Dallas Turner. Uh, but yes, there, there's not like there's a few names that I'm seeing thrown out in a lot of mock drafts where it's it's uh, Marshall Neeland from Western Michigan. There's a bunch that that I don't they're either older or they're not great athletes or they weren't super productive. I think you would be really running the risk of getting another. I don't want to say AJ Eppen is a, that AJ Epines is a bad player, but like you don't want someone in round two at pick 60, or if you trade up for him to be like your third or fourth defensive end in, in two or three years. So yes, I think getting aggressive, if one of those edge rushers fall, or maybe just picking like a chop Robinson at 28 for as crazy as that sounds. And it would send shockwaves through Western New York for if the bills didn't go wide receiver. And I've mentioned that there's not like, complete depth at the receiver spot there's way better depth there than i think there is at edge rusher on day two now chris if you're going to talk to sit down with us i'm sorry as a former db we got to talk about a couple of them and one of them today sure. had a very very good workout cooper DeGene. i feel as if his athletic profile probably shoots him up the draft boards now that he's um i mean i believe four four jumped out the gym but i the more i've watched him i watched him for the past two years at iowa and mm -hmm. viewing some of the Iowa players of the past, I view him as a safety, and that's not knocking him as a corner. I think he's a really darn good player wherever you put him. Is that, does it intrigue you at all if, for some odd reason, the teams aren't convinced by this workout and he's still there in the late 20s for him to be a Bills player? Well, what I would say is this. There's not really, in my opinion, like that bona fide first-round safety in this class. And there's usually a few. Like Tyler Newbrin and Cam Kinchins from Minnesota and Miami – on film, look like the two best safeties, but they both had horrible workouts, like not even close to first round caliber workouts. Now you're mentioning DeGene runs 443, close to a 40 inch vertical, all the agility drills are there, and it translates on film. He's an outstanding tackler. And what you're mentioning that he's probably a safety, well, we know from watching Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, safeties have to play in the slot today in the NFL. And I think DeGene can transition to that role seamlessly, like from day one, from week one in the NFL, he can. Play three safety, one snap, drop down into the slot, play on the boundary. He can do so many different things. He does intrigue me because of the athleticism, how good of a tackler he is. And, of course, it is a pretty big need for the Bills even after signing Mike Edwards. Chris, is there a guy, maybe probably day three, but it doesn't have to be that deep in the draft, to where, you know, when, when you have a team like the Bills where Sean McDermott's been there for so many years, you get a good feel for what kind of guy fits on this team, mm. probably more so on defense than on offense, because obviously the Bills have rolled through coordinators on offense lately. But is there a guy in this draft when you watch him, you just think, 
wow, that guy screams Billsy to me. And if you want, it can be a guy who wrestled in high school. I'm sure that might come up at some point. Uh, yeah, there's a few. So Bo Limmer is a center from Arkansas who just kind of feels like he could play center or guard. He had at center a 36 and a half inch vertical and 39 reps on the bench. So like it is rare that a center is that strong and that explosive multiple year starter at Arkansas uh, was, was really good last season. It kind of felt like he's going to be a probably third or fourth round pick. Um, not seeing a ton of buzz for him. And then on the defensive side, I'll go way into day three. If we are thinking that the Bills, because they haven't really changed a bunch on the defensive side outside of, you know, a new defensive coordinator, but still the same scheme we're expecting. Eric Watts from UConn. Go watch his film. He is like 6'6", 270, like 84-inch wingspan, super long, uh, good run defender, like three down player. And I could see him being like a bigger version of AJ Epinesa that the Bills can rely upon to set the edge, to get off blocks in the run game, maybe chip in with a couple of tip passes at the line. Kind of feels like that player that the Bills have prioritized length and size at the edge. Eric Watts from UConn uh, would be that name on the defensive side on day three. Chris, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I was very proud of my 38 inch vertical and now I'm embarrassed that a center jumped to 36. So <laughs> I, I need to get back in the lab and fix that one. But if we're going to stay on the day three stuff for those at yep. home who are still watching the draft at this point and they want to see another receiver. Like they're like, you know what? Mm. We got one on the first two days. We want another one. Who is someone that Bills fans could maybe see when they see his name pop up on the right side of the screen, they'll be intrigued uh, to look at him because you said his name. Well, first off, Carl, I'll say I, I do think the Bills should double dip in this class. And whether they get the burner early, if they pick Xavier Worthy and kind of surprise everyone, if they go McConkey, if they trade up, this is a class where they should pick two receivers. And just given their roster makeup, I think they should do that. There's two names, and this is more kind of staying in line with what I said, that I think there's more niche players. Bub Means from Pittsburgh. He's like kind of reminds me of a faster version of Gabe Davis, not going to run intricate routes, not going to get open on every play, but averaged over 17 yards per catch in college, uh, ran four, four, four at the combine six, one, two Oh five, two ten, somewhere in that range. Just that vertical outside wide receiver didn't really do much else besides get down the field. And that was really the book on Gabe Davis coming out of UCF. And then I'll go way deep, uh, which is kind of a similar player, Ryan Flournoy from Southeast Missouri state. Had a really good senior bowl, similar size to Bub Means, like six foot, just over 200 pounds, ran 4-4-3, 40-inch vertical, 11-foot broad jump. So he's a freaky athlete, and I think a lot of teams lean toward, hey, let's just take a flyer on, on a big-time athlete on day three. That's kind of how I feel as well. Um, he's someone, yes, it will take him time to be able to beat press and just deal with the athleticism jump that he'll see at corner going from playing against teams that he played at Southeast Missouri State to the NFL but with that type of athleticism and that size and he's actually pretty good after the catch as well he would be a name that would be interesting like sixth or seventh round that I think if the Bills want to double dip they would just not have to do anything else besides really get down the field and we know those explosive plays have been kind of missing in this Bills offense the last few years. Bills certainly have plenty of picks if they want to take shots yeah. on, on super athletes late in this draft as well. Let's wrap up with this, Chris. You know, this uh, obviously this draft is going to start with a quarterback, maybe three, four quarterbacks. When it comes to Caleb Williams, though, by himself, where does he rank in terms of quarterbacks over the last 5, 10, 15 years of draft? I think probably the top three we'd look at would be Trevor Lawrence, Andrew Luck, Joe Burrow in some order. Do you put Caleb in that realm? Do you put someone else in this draft in that realm or, or is this kind of a quarterback draft with, yes, they're very good, but not that superb generational type guy. I don't know if I can call Caleb Williams generational. I mean, he does some crazy Patrick Mahomes type stuff. And we didn't really see that from Andrew Luck or Trevor Lawrence. Now that really wasn't the style that quarterbacks were asked to play with at those times. Um, but I think he's definitely an elite prospect now had Caleb Williams played similarly to how he played when he won the Heisman. I would put him up there with Luck and Trevor Lawrence. The biggest difference is if you look at the numbers and just watching the film, Caleb Williams' this past season, his numbers against pressure were really bad. They were like among the worst in the nation. So for being this Patrick Mahomes guy that's so good off script, you would think that he would just be terrorizing the blitz. He would be great under pressure. We saw that when he won the Heisman in 2022, but really dipped or regressed a lot in 2023. And it felt like 
Andrew Luck and Trevor Lawrence really never had that sizable dip despite getting a lot of hype early in their respective college careers. Yeah, I'm with you there. I, I like Williams a lot, but I can't put him up in the same level with with Luck and Lawrence. And I mean, I know people point to the Notre Dame game all the time, and I realize that was one bad game against a really good defense, but there are things in that game that Williams does to where you have to nick him. You have to just kind of say, yeah, for sure. you know, this, this guy can't be number one overall if I'm going to watch him do this stuff. All right, Chris, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. And uh, you can find more of Chris's work at cbssports.com. He's on X slash Twitter at Chris Trapasso. For Carl Jones, I'm Thad Brown. As always, you can watch 8 Sports Extra by going to rosterfirst.com. Click on the Sports tab. 8 Sports Extra is right there, and you can also find these on YouTube as well. For Chris, for Carl, I'm Thad. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you on 8 Sports Extra next time.